Ministry Income Management in the Northern Territory has worked to improve outcomes, any outcomes, and I need it for the record for Hansard, uh, just a response. The response is from all of the analysis I've done on all of the evaluations I'm aware of, there is no substantive evidence of there being any systematic improvements in outcomes in the Northern Territory, and in particular for the Indigenous population, where around a third of that population aged 15 years and over have been on that payment. What and about, sorry, Dr. Bray, what about evidence in relation to uh, families, women in particular, saying that it has worked for them in terms of protecting themselves and their children and families? Has anything like that come through in any of your evidence? There has been, once again, no systematic evidence on that. There is always some anecdotal evidence, but it's a balance of anecdotal evidence. So, for example, in Northern Territory, we had people saying, yes, I was being humbugged a little bit less. But then the same people were saying, but I'm having to humbug others more because of the situation that I'm in on the basics card. So there are always these little bits which can be picked up by someone, but, and that's why I'm using the word systematic. There is no evidence overall that this has had a big impact, so positive if, impact. Is there any evidence that income management works when it is more targeted and case managed? Our understanding is yes. Uh, Whereabouts? In what particular okay, situation? Okay, there are two, two elements here. Uh, one is the Cape York uh, welfare trial. Now, once again, one can't fully unpack whether that is just the income management element or the strong support that's actually given through the whole apparatus in that trial. But the two together appear to do something. Similarly, in the Northern Territory, when the uh, new income management was first introduced, they had a specific targeted program where the Centrelink social workers, who are fairly aware of who is really having problems, were able to put people on the scheme if they felt they were vulnerable and if they felt there were negative outcomes. Uh, having spoken with the social workers, all of them said it was useful. Okay. They all also said it didn't really do anything to address the key underlying problems that many of these people had, but in combination with other services, it meant at least some of these people were getting a meal each day, and that is a good positive outcome. Okay. But it's that tight targeting. Dr Bray, we've heard... Um We've heard evidence in relation to um, birth weights. Uh, can I just ask about uh, the issue of stillbirth? Have you had any evidence in relation to that with the research that uh, you've conducted? Not in the research that I've done. Uh, I've presented in the evidence the trend in child mortality, which is within the first year and the low birth weight, but not on the stillbirth issue specifically. Okay, could I just go to uh, the broad-based income management? Uh, does it uh, build capacity or strip it away? And that's an open question. Uh, the evidence that we collected says it strips it away. Mm. Uh, from, that's everything from the anecdotal evidence of, I can remember one uh, of the kids in, North, in Alice Springs who responded who had just finished school and said, I've, I've learnt all of these things. I thought I'd be leaving school and becoming a responsible person. And no, I've had this imposed on me. On that side, through to all, we looked at detailed data on whether or not people spent all of their income support money, immediately they received it, or whether they actually saved up bits of it and used it evenly across the fortnight. There was absolutely no evidence of income management changing the way in which people change, manage their money. 
if we asked, we asked a lot of the people who said they wanted to stay on income management, why? And the answer was, I'm used to it. It's, and it's easier to stay on. It makes my life easier. Easier to stay on because it's too hard to get off? A combination of easier to stay on because it's too hard to get off and a combination of it takes a lot of the decisions away from me that I don't have to make. All right. And we actually, this was something we saw as stripping away independence. Uh, we did consult in some of the communities on this and the views was this was not always seen as a negative. In some communities, they were saying, no, look, a lot of the people who are on it will remain on income, income support for most of their lives. And if it makes their life easier, that community was relaxed about that continuing, which, Dr. of course, it can under voluntary. Dr Hunt, did you want to just respond quickly? I just wanted to contrast okay. that with the community capacity that's built mm. when you work in partnership. Um, and I think we've seen that with the book social um, the reinvestment uh, program because that has built community capacity to analyze the whole life life cycle and to look at the intervention points that they needed to look at in order to address the problems that they were trying to address and I think that has built not just individual capacity but community capacity community governance a whole range of things which will have long-term uh, benefits because that capacity has been built. Um, whereas what Dr Bray is saying, um, and I know reading his new income management report earlier, it, it's creating more dependence rather than creating people's ability to, you know, to solve their own problems and resolve, um, resolve community problems in the process. Okay, I'll, I'll just, I know uh, Senator Lambie is to, uh, has to ask questions mm. too, just finally. Um, is income management in the Northern Territory racially discriminatory? I would say yes, <laughs> as someone who does uh, human rights yeah. law. Yes, it is because there is indirect racial discrimination occurring because the program disproportionately impacts on Australia's first peoples more so than any other people in the country. And so there are still ongoing human rights violations with the cashless debit card. Should the cashless debit card be rolled out further in the Northern Territory, um, that is just going to continue to have that grossly uh, disproportionate impact on Indigenous people who make up at the last uh, publicly released data on income management, the income management summary data, close to 80 per cent of the cohort who are income managed in the Northern Territory. And there is a body of scholarship that suggests engaging in racial discrimination against people has adverse health income, sorry, has adverse health impacts. And so that is, again, something that's inconsistent with the government's other policy objectives, the closing the gap objectives, for example.